Have you ever needed a system where you could constantly put data into some kind of queue and then handle that data in chronological order and remove it from the queue once you're done with it? Some use cases of this could be perhaps a typewriter text display on the screen, which is what I'll demonstrate in this video. Or maybe you need a system where you can input songs into a queue, keep playing the songs until they're done left. Maybe you need animations to be played in chronological order, and you don't want to play the next animation until the previous one is finished playing. Or perhaps you need some kind of uh, queue for a quest system in your game, only advancing to the next quest once the previous quest has been completed. So this module that I've made, which is called the scheduler, should hopefully help you fulfill the problems I've just mentioned. This is a module that acts as a class and it has a constructor inside of it for you to construct and create new scheduler objects. These objects act as queues where you can input some stuff into it. And then this queue or the scheduler will give the stuff back to you to handle it. And then you can let the scheduler know when you're ready to receive the next item. And of course you can do this either in last in first out or first in first out. You're able to change the policy for your queue. So let's go ahead and take a brief overview of all of the functions in this class before we start using it. Obviously the one we just saw is the ability to change the policy for your scheduler. There's a function to get the number of tasks that are currently in the queue. There is a function to bind a callback to the scheduler, and this is going to be the callback responsible for handling the different uh, tasks, you could say, that are in your queue. It'll give it to the callback. Your callback will handle that. And once you're done handling whatever value that is given to your callback, there is a function called done handling task, which you'll use to notify the scheduler that you're ready to receive the next item. You are also able to add a predicate to this scheduler to filter out any tasks that you deem unnecessary. So for example, maybe your scheduler is a container of a bunch of different strings. And let's say just in case somehow some strings get in there that you don't want and you want to be able to filter it out, we'll give it a predicate and then it'll pass that particular string to it. You can do whatever checks you want and then you can have your function return a boolean to let it know if you want this particular item to be included or not included in the queue. And then of course, to get this whole scheduler thing going, there's a function called add task where you can give it any number of tasks and it inserts it into the queue. And if the scheduler is not currently active, then it will start the queue and start giving you uh, all the tasks or basically just giving it to the callback function that you have binded to your scheduler. So that's enough of me talking about this module. Let's actually put this module into use. I have this text label on the screen that I'm going to use as some kind of like typewriter display or caption display. And we have a local script inside of my screen GUI. So let's go ahead and make a reference to my GUI, which is script.parent. And then we'll make a reference to the text label that's in my GUI. And then let's say I have uh, a table of text that I want to display in chronological order on the screen. So maybe the first set of text I want to display is like, hello there. And then afterwards, the next set of text I want to display is I could say this is an example series of text. And then maybe I want to be able to filter some of this text out so we could have some kind of keyword that we could search for. Maybe we could use like the word filtered. So we could say this text may be filtered out and then we could have a predicate function that search for any string that has this word inside of it so this text right here would be filtered out because it has that word and then we could say something like uh, but this will continue displaying text until there is no more text left in the queue and then we could say something like this should be the last message. So let's say I want to display all of this text on my screen in a typewriter effect, and I want to wait like, let's say two seconds between each one of these messages. Well, I could do exactly that using my scheduler. So I'm going to go ahead and require my scheduler. I'm using a plugin to quickly require it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scheduler object. I'm going to call this my text reader. It's going to be equal to scheduler dot new. Now what I can go ahead and do with my text reader is I can use that function, which is bind callback 
to bind a function to my text reader to handle any of the information placed inside of the queue. Now I want to be placing strings into my queue. So this task that will be passed to my callback should be a string. So we could say next task, and I'm going to type annotate this as being a string. Now, of course, to get all of this going and set in motion, I need to add all of these different strings into my scheduler. So I could do uh, add task and I want to insert all of these uh, messages. So what I could do is I could just unpack this entire text table and give it to this function and it'll insert all of that into my queue. Now, what I want to do is every single time it's gonna give me one of those strings, I want to have a typewriter effect so we could have a for loop that loops through the length of the string and then uh, set the text label on the screen to be equal to a substring. So it looks like we have like a, a typewriter effect where we start with the first character and then the second and then the third and so on. So what I'll do here is when I receive my string, I'll create a for loop that starts at the index of one all the way to the length of this string. And what I'll do is I will set my text labels text equal to, and we're going to use the string dot sub function to get a substring of this string given to my callback. And it's going to be from the first index all the way to the length of I, whatever I is. So this should give us a nice typewriter effect. And then I want to slow it down as well. So I'm going to put a yield statement in here. We're gonna wait 0.05 seconds between every single character. And then after we're done typewriting the whole thing on the screen, we could wait something like two seconds before we want to display the next element on the screen. And then to notify my scheduler that I'm ready to get the next string, all I need to do is refer to my scheduler and then call the done handling task function. And now I am ready to receive the next task. So with what we have so far, let's go ahead and hop into the game and see if our typewriter effect is working. And hopefully if we take a look, there we go. We're getting our uh, text typewritten or typewritten on the screen and it's waiting two seconds between each one of our text until eventually we should reach the last string and then this will stop displaying text once we reach that last string. So this should be the last message. And then there you go. Nothing else happens because we reached the last element inside of the queue. Now, perhaps I don't want to keep this text on the screen. Maybe I want to set the text label string to an empty string. So that way, once we reach the last message, there's nothing displayed. So thankfully, there is another function that we can access in our scheduler. And that is the connect to queue empty signal. So we can connect a callback and this function will be executed once there are no more elements left inside of our scheduler. And when that happens, all we need to do is set the text labels text equal to an empty string. So let's go ahead and try this out now. All right, this should be the last message. And then there we go. It disappears because that was the last element in the queue. And then the event was fired, which allowed us to set the text labels text to an empty string. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and show off adding a predicate to our scheduler. For example, maybe we want to filter out some specific strings in here. For example, if a string has maybe the word filtered inside of it, we want to not include it. So before we add all of our tasks or before we, you know, start looping through and getting all of the different elements in the queue, we should add a predicate to it. And this predicate is going to receive a particular element, which is going to be a string. So this is next task and it's going to be a string. And we need to have our function return a Boolean. We'll return true if we want to go ahead and include the item in the scheduler, or we need to return false if we want to ignore it and skip it. So what we can do here is we can check if we can find the word inside of our string of, let's say we wanna filter out the word filtered. So if this string has this word inside of it, then we're just going to return false, indicating we don't want to include this particular task. Otherwise, we can go ahead and return true. So now that means as we're looping or going through each one of these uh, strings, this string right here that has the word filtered inside of it should no longer be included uh, when we're writing text out on the screen in our little typewriting style. So we get hello there. 
And then this is an example series of text. The next one should be filtered out. There we go. It's gone. We skipped the string that had the word filtered in it. And now we're going on to the other strings that were inside of our queue. Now you might be thinking, what's the point of this if I could just use a for loop and just loop through all the elements inside of my text uh, table? Well, the neat thing about the scheduler is we can continue to add tasks while it is actively running and it will handle those tasks accordingly. So for example, let me actually grab something like the text chat service. And when we receive a message, so we could do message received, connect a function, let's autofill that. So when we get a new message, perhaps we want to add this message into our text reader. So we can do text reader and then add task. And we need to add a new string and we'll add text chat message and get the text for this particular message. And we'll add that into the queue. So now if we go and play test the game, it's going to go through all of those elements we originally gave to it. But now as I chat in the game, so I could say something like hello there. Uh, bananas, apples, and oranges, these strings should now be included inside of my scheduler and they will appear uh, on the screen in this typewriter effect. So let's see what happens. There we go. Hello there. And then we should get bananas and then we'll get apples and then we'll get oranges. There we go. And then since that was the last string, text was set to nothing. Now, the cool thing about it is our scheduler is not dead. It's just waiting for us to add more tasks to it. So if I continue to chat in the game, I could say something like howdy. It's going to type right on the screen and then disappear again because that was the only item inside of the scheduler. But I'll continue to type. I'll just say ha 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 apples, bananas, oranges, pears, fruit. I love fruit. And then it'll continue displaying that on the screen. And then if I say something like if I say filtered and then I say bananas, what you're going to see is there you go. It skipped that string because it had the word that we were filtering out from it. So it didn't include it uh, in our scheduler. So if you would like to use this module in your projects, I'll have it linked in the description below as an RBXM file that you can drag and drop into studio and begin using it for your games. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.